Hello friends and welcome to the lecture number 26 on power electronics in the electrical is easy channel. So in the previous video we have seen what is the reverse recovery characteristics on a practical diode, right? So today we will be deriving an expression for the reverse recovery charge of which a small introduction I had given in the previous video. So let us start by actually seeing what is the definition of the reverse recovery charge, okay? So Basically, the reverse recovery charge is the amount of charge carriers that flow across the diode in the reverse direction due to the changeover from forward conduction to reverse blocking conduction. Now, this is a very easy point to understand, right? So, we already told whenever a diode moves from the uh, forward conduction to the reverse blocking condition, there are some, there is the reverse recovery current which is flowing through the diode and that is in the reverse direction, right? So, what is reverse recovery charge is that it is the amount of charge carriers that flow from the diode in the reverse direction, right? So if you look at in the graph, it will be more clear. So here we are having the graph. So let me take the pen here. Okay. So here we are having this graph. So this is the current ID. Okay. And this is the time T in the uh, X axis. So we have seen that all these time definitions we already seen in the previous video. So at T0, you know that the voltage is going from forward condition to reverse condition. So current does not flow instantaneously. It gradually moves uh, by a current, a DK current, not DK current. It, the current actually reduces by a factor of DI by DT. Okay. And at T1, at T1, you can see the current becomes equal to zero, right? And at T2, the current becomes equal to the reverse recovery current. And finally, in T3, the current becomes 25 percentage of reverse recovery current. And we told you that the time between T1 and T3, that is where the current falls to zero and the current reaches 25 percentage of the reverse recovery current, that time you call as reverse recovery time. Okay. So what is the definition of reverse recovery charge? The total charge which is flowing in this reverse recovery time is called the reverse recovery charge. Okay. So here also in the reverse recovery charge, you can clearly see what is reverse recovery charge. The charge that is flowing in this particular area is called the reverse recovery charge. Okay? So you can see that this graph has two parts here. Right? Let's take a red pen here now. So this graph has two parts. And for these two parts, we have defined two times also. Right? So TRR, we already seen, is equal to TA plus TB. TRR is equal to TA plus TB, where TA is actually due to the charge which is stored in the depletion ray and TB is this charge which is generally stored in the bulk of the semiconductor. Okay, So total TRR is equal to TA plus TB. So with reference to this, you can clearly divide the graph into two portions and this is your IRR. Right? This value is called the IRR. So the graph can be divided into two portions. Let us divide the graph into two portions. So one is from this time T1 to T2. right? So this is one portion of the graph, T1 to T2. And from T2 to T3, you are having the second point, the okay, second part of this graph. So you also know that uh, by the definition which you might have learned in engineering circuit analysis, charge is the integral of time. So integral of current, not integral of time, integral of current. So what is the basic idea of integration? The integration is nothing but the area. Okay. So if you know the current graph, this is already taught in Engineering circuit analysis. If you note the current graph, variation of current with respect to time, if you want to find the charge, for example, you want to find the charge between T1 and T2, all you have to do is find this particular area. So you can clearly find the charge by finding what is the area which is enclosed by the graph. So this graph we can divide into two uh, time periods, T1 to T2 and T2 to T3. So the charge which is enclosed between T1 to T2, the charge which is enclosed between T1 to T2, we can call it as Q1, okay? And the charge which is enclosed between T2 to T3, we can call it as Q2, okay? So the total reverse recovery charge, QRR, we can define it as Q1 plus Q2, okay? So the total reverse recovery charge due to TRR, in the time period TRR is QRR and that is called Q1 plus Q2. So how to find the value of Q1? Q1 you can easily find by finding this area here you can easily find by finding this area. So this clearly is a right angle triangle, right? So Q1 will be equal to half into base into height, right? Half into base into height. So this value will be half into, what is the base here? The base is 
TA, right? The base is TA. T1 to T2, the value of TA. And what is the height? The height is this current value. The height is this current value. And what is that value? It is IRR. The current value is IRR. Height is IRR, right? Similarly, Q2 will be area in this region. This is the area in Q2. So this approximately, we can call it half into base into height. Exactly, it is not the same because it's not a right angle triangle. But let us take it as a right angle triangle for the sake of explanation. So that will be equal to half into the base will be TB. The base will be TB and the height, let us take it as IRR itself. Okay, IRR itself. Therefore, QRR will be equal to Q1 plus Q2 and this is roughly equal to half into TA into IRR plus half into TB into IRR, TB into IRR. So let us move to the next page. Let us just uh, bring a little bit more space here. So QRR is equal to half into uh, TA into IRR plus half into TB into IRR. So if you want to simplify this equation a little bit, you can take this IRR outside. So this is half into IRR into TA plus TB. TA plus TB. Now you already know this TA plus TB is nothing but your reverse recovery time TRR. So this will be equal to half into IRR into TRR. Okay. So this is an important part here. Now, if you know the, for example, in that particular graph here, let us see that graph. So you know what is DI by DT. Right, you know by what is di by dt. We are not giving a value for di by dt, but let us assume that you know what is the value of di by dt. So this entire uh, rate at which it is falling is uh, di by dt. Now, if you know the time value, okay, if you know the time value, this is ta, okay, then you can easily find the current value. So the current value will be equal to the rate of change of rate of change of current, rate of change of current multiplied by time, right, it will be multiplied by time. So if you want to find the value of I, uh, the current in the time TA, you can easily find it by So by this particular equation, you can easily find an equation for IRR, right? What is that IRR? So IRR will be equal to, IRR will be equal to DI by DT, the rate of change of current multiplied by TA from this side, multiplied by T. It's very simple, right? If you know the rate of change of something and you multiply it by time, so you will get at the end of that TA cycle, what is that value? Okay, so this is one way of writing it. So now let us substitute this IRR value in the previous uh, next page there. So you have already found out that this IRR is nothing but the rate of change of time multiplied by the time, right? Rate of change of time multiplied by the time. So you are getting this value of IRR, which is the value of I current at the end of TA. Okay. So that we can substitute here. We can write the IRR in terms of di by dt, etc. So this QRR will be equal to half into di divided by dt multiplied by ta multiplied by trr right now this trr value is equal to ta plus tb trr value is equal to ta plus tb now in practical diodes if you see the graph this ta value is much higher than the tb value this ta value is much higher than the tb value therefore we can write this trr to be approximately equal to this ta value okay so QRR now will become equal to half into DI divided by DT multiplied by what? This TA I am replacing by TRR multiplied by TRR whole square because it's TRR into TRR. So TRR the whole square. So now you are having an equation for the reverse recovery charge. So this is a very important equation to find out the reverse recovery charge. So from this equation, you can also find another equation that is the reverse recovery time. So TRR will be equal to, what will be TRR value equal to, equal to is 2 into QRR, just taking that to the side, divided by DI by DT, divided by DI by DT. And because there is a square here, you can put a square root. Okay. So this is another important equation. 
so this is the equation for the reverse recovery charge reverse recovery charge and this is the equation for reverse recovery time reverse recovery time so you are having two important equations for the storage charge also which is also known as the reverse recovery charge and also you are having an equation for reverse recovery time here so now by using a little bit of mathematics we will find another equation for the reverse recovery current okay so you already know that reverse recovery current is nothing but the rate of change of current multiplied by t this already we have seen so i can write irr will be equal to di divided by dt and this ta you know that is roughly equal to trr okay so i can write this uh, trr to be equal to this trr i can write it to be equal to irr divided by di by dt irr divided by di by dt so i'll just put this particular equation here so i'll write irr divided by di divided by dt okay will be equal to root of q r r divided by di divided by dt okay so now if you can uh, simplify it it's very easy simplification so i'll just do it uh, step by step in case you don't want to make a mistake so you can just square both sides so you get i r r whole square into di by dt the whole square is equal to 2 q r r divided by di by dt right simple squaring on both sides so you can cut this and this will also go here so therefore this i r r your value of i r r will be equal to 2 into q r r multiplied by di by dt multiplied by di by dt so this is the third important equation so this equation was for the storage time in terms of di by dt this equation was for the reverse recovery time and this is for the reverse recovery current now if you see in these two equations there is a very interesting concept you can see that the trr and the irr that is the reverse recovery time and reverse recovery current are dependent on are dependent on qrr qrr and the rate of change of current rate of change of current so in this case the rate of change of current is nothing but the decrease in the current okay so it is reverse recovery ka you can also call this qr as storage charge or reverse recovery charge okay so this is very important now what is the and on which is this qrr dependent upon the qrr is dependent upon the forward current is dependent on the forward current see when the diode is uh, for example you are having a diode like this okay so when in the forward bias condition you know there a forward current will flow so the amount of forward current determines how much of storage charge you are going to get or the how much reverse recovery charge you are going to get so this is another very important point sometimes these are asked in competitive question so trr and irr are dependent upon the storage charge and the rate of change of current and the storage charge is dependent upon the forward current of the diode okay now now that you have understood all these concept let us do a small numerical a very easy numerical we will do so let us move to the next slide and see what is the numerical so the reverse recovery time of a diode is trr is equal to 3 microsecond so trr is equal to 3 microsecond and the rate of fall of the diode current di by dt is 30 ampere per microsecond okay so the di by dt is given to be 30 amps per microsecond okay so what they are asking a find the storage charge qr okay that is the first thing and b the peak reverse current irr peak reverse current irr so these are direct application of the formulas so you know that qrr is equal to half into di divided by dt into T R R R the whole square. The only tricky part in this question is just converting everything into SI units. So, half. so we'll just do a simple substitution here. So this is half into D I by D T is uh, 30 ampere per microsecond, right? And uh, T R R square or T R R is 3 micro microsecond. So this is 3 microsecond. So you can just convert everything into SI units. 
or if you can do it faster you can do a little bit of trick and you can uh, complete it like that also but let us do the procedure let us convert everything into si unit so half into 30 amperes so that is an si unit so this we will convert into seconds so 1 microsecond is 10 power minus 6 seconds so 10 power minus 6 seconds you will get here so multiplied by 3 into 10 power minus 6 so the whole square okay so you will get this value this is equal to 0 0.5 into 30 into 9 okay into 10 power minus 6 the whole square divided by 10 power minus 6 okay i'm just doing it by procedure so you also get a habit to do it like this once you get enough speed you can do it very fast also so this value will be equal to this is equal to 135 into 10 power minus 6 right 135 into 10 power minus so this will go and this will go and this is in coulombs you have got because you have converted everything's everything in uh, si units so the charge unit is in coulombs right so this is in coulombs so you can write this as 135 micro coulombs also rather than putting 10 power minus 6 coulombs you can put it as micro coulombs so it's a good practice of uh, practicing it with different units okay so with this we will conclude our discussion on the reverse recovery characteristics In the next video we will see how diodes are classified based on the reverse recovery characteristics okay so till i see you in the next video it's me varun signing off and have a great day thank you now that the video is over please stay with me for 30 more seconds now the vision of this channel is to create a repository of good quality videos with crystal clear explanation regarding various topics related to electrical engineering now if you want to help me spread the word please share this video with anyone interested in these topics the second thing is that for me education is a two-way process therefore if you have any doubts or suggestions regarding any of the videos or regarding the channel, please put them in the comments below. We can have a healthy discussion and that way we can build a strong community of electrical engineers. So that's it for today's video. So till I see you in the next time, it's me Varun signing off and have a great day. Thank you.